So today we're going to try and make our own ammonite. I've got some real ones here, ones that were collected locally to where I live, and also this one, which is a lovely polished one, which I think comes from Madagascar. You can see all the beautiful patterns there if I hold it up to the light. And these local ones, you either find them on their own, like this, just in the sand when the tide goes out, or you find them encased in the rock still, like this example here that's been broken open. So we're going to try and create the same kind of spiral shape um, using various materials. So I'm going to start with drawing a simple spiral, just starting from the centre really, and just trying to do a very simple spiral shape. Now, the ammonite that I'm going to build will be bigger than this, but this just gives us a nice start for the first part of the process. I'm just going to make that a little bit darker so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. And we're going to build on top of this. We're actually going to use something quite unusual. We're going to use some tin foil. I'm going to roll this up and see if I can make the first part of the shape to show you. So you can see what I did there. I took a tapered piece of foil that I'd rolled up and took the thinnest end and attached it right into the centre of that spiral. And then I've wound it round and attached a bit of tape just to hold it in place. So now I'm using a blunt pencil just to push all of that tape in. It's quite hard to get your fingers into that central part, so I'm going to use the pencil to push that down. And then I'm going to roll up the next piece of foil a little bit thicker and try and see if I can go round a little bit further. So you can see that's starting to take shape, but if you look closely, there's a bit that's sort of gone wrong where these two pieces join together. There's a little space where there's a piece missing. Now, this is the beauty of using the foil, because if I take another small piece of foil, and almost use it like a piece of clay that I'm going to push into the space, press it down so it fills that little gap, and then put an extra bit of tape on there. Okay, now you could leave the ammonite as it is. You could make it get a little bit bigger by adding to the spiral. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of the leftover foil that I've got here to put some little ridges across the surface of it. So I'm just taking small pieces rolling them as tight as I can in my hands and then I'm going to use these to build some little ridges just on the outside edge here so I'm going to place them on pop a bit of tape over the top give that a pinch so that you can see the texture of it underneath and then I'm going to take my scissors and just snip off the bit that we don't want to see okay and we'll try and do that a little bit further round Right, so at this point, it's probably a good idea to try and make sure all of this is stuck down really well. So a couple of things you can do. You can obviously pinch at the tape a little bit, try and force it down onto the background. If anything feels a bit wobbly, you can pop another piece on and do the same. And then also you can switch back to using a blunt pencil again and just give these bits of tape a bit of a rub down so they start to drop down into those spaces. So I'm going to do that not only on the inside, but also where I've added these little bumps around the outside. We'll do the same there. Just force the tape in a little. Sometimes as well, if the tape's in the background, you can sort of scribble onto it and that helps it to stick down onto the surface. OK, that looks fine. So the next stage is we're going to put a bit of paper mache on here just to make this a bit stronger and easier to paint. Um, this can be really cheap. So I've got some packing tissue here. I think this came in a pair of shoes, you know, stuffed inside a pair of shoes. So I've got some packing tissue. I've got some watered down PVA glue here. And I'm just going to put a layer of the tissue just over the top and push it into all the spaces. So 
So that seems to be working really well. I've managed to get a layer of tissue paper all the way over the top. If you haven't got some tissue paper, you could just use something like kitchen roll or toilet paper. It will give you a slightly different texture, but it will still do the same job. And the only thing we've got left now before we paint this is you can see there's still the messy bits of tape that are sticking out of the side of the model. So I'm gonna hide those first of all before we do anything else. So I'm gonna use the same glue. And this time, the cheapest and easiest way to do this is to get a piece of the scrap cardboard, similar to the base that you're using, tear the outside skin off it. So you can see the cardboard's made of different layers here. So if you grab one part of it, you can actually tear it open. And then you can use this skin around the outside to cover up any bits that you don't want to see. So I'll take a piece there, We'll rip this up and then we'll stick it on top of the masking tape. Now you can see how that's worked. That's covered over the masking tape. It's also given us quite a nice texture in the background. So I'm, I don't want to throw this piece away. So I'm going to use this to make a little border around the outside and that'll finish it off as an image. And then we can leave it to dry and put some nice paint on it afterwards. Well, this has had a chance to dry off nicely now, so this is quite strong, uh, it's all dry, and before I do any detailed painting on the ammonite itself, I'm gonna wash an undercoat over the whole thing, just to give it that kind of silvery grey of the actual rock itself. So while that's still wet in the background, I'm just gonna turn my brush upside down. I'm just gonna scratch into the background just to make it look a bit more interesting. Put a bit of texture into there, almost to make it look like little cracks running through the rock. There we go, work my way around. And then we'll leave that to dry and then we can paint the ammonite itself. And there it is, our finished Ammonite artwork.